Hello, welcome to the Thursday, November 29th, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. One of the most common attack that I see against Max is fake Flash Player updates or Flash Player downloads. Some of them are actually pretty good in the way they sort of emulate the operating system dialogues that you usually see if you're installing or updating Flash. Today, we do have one example by Xavier here, and he's sort of continuing his theme from yesterday about obfuscating batch script because that's used to here actually install the malware. Now, the virus total score that Xavier got when he submitted this particular sample to virus total was actually quite low. Only one antivirus engine recognized it. What I often found with these DMG files that the DMG file itself isn't recognized, but once you mount it and once the antivirus engine then looks at the components inside the DMG file, it often recognizes one of them as malicious. So the effectiveness of antivirus may be a little bit better than VirusTotal suggests in these examples. But in the end, the vulnerability that's being attacked here is the user. There is no real weakness necessarily in the operating system being exploited here other than tricking the user into installing the malicious file for the attacker. And talking about users willingly installing bad software, it's sometimes not malware that's the problem. Latest case, Sennheiser's head setup software. This software is used to allow headsets by Sennheiser to connect to various soft phones. And now in order to accomplish this, Sennheiser provides some software that sets up a secure web socket. That secure web socket is secured with a certificate that's signed by a Sennheiser certificate authority. So in order to trust it, you need to also trust Sennheiser's certificate authority. Well, uh, not ideal, but uh, what happened next uh, turns this into something even worse. So when you install this software, you also add Sennheiser Certificate Authority as a trusted Certificate Authority in your operating system. But in one particular version of the installer, Sennheiser not only delivered the certificate for the Certificate Authority, but also the private key. So the risk here is that anybody who trusts Sennheiser Sennheiser Certificate Authority is now subject to a man in the middle attack because an attacker could easily use this Certificate Authority key pair and then sign arbitrary certificates that would be trusted by any computer having this head setup software installed. Now, Sennheiser released a new version of the software with a new certificate authority. So hopefully they're maintaining this better this time around and are not losing their private key again. Still not sure if I really like the approach they're taking here. For more details, see the blog post by Secorvo Security Consulting. They're the ones that actually found this problem. And you may have noticed updates arriving from Microsoft on Tuesday. These are these normal third Tuesday updates. They're not uh, security updates typically, but instead they fix various bugs. And now, in this case, there are a couple of uh, issues that are being addressed that you may want to consider security fixes. For example, one bug being addressed here is an issue in File Explorer that may delete the permissions of shared parent folders when you delete the shared child folder. So permission change is usually not a good thing. This is actually an issue that apparently goes back to February and now finally gets addressed. And Google has a nice write-up about the takedown of the Eve botnet. The Eve botnet was an ad fraud botnet, and of course, as such, it really hit Google where it counts most, and that's ad income. These ad botnets typically have two components. First of all, and that's of the more obvious part, they're trying to do click fraud. They're trying to fake clicks by essentially setting up bots in order to act as humans and click on ads. Now, this has become more and more difficult over the years. There's of course this cat and mouse game between advertisers like Google 
And botnets trying to bypass whatever protections the advertisers come up with. So uh, these botnets are now able to sort of mimic mouse movements and they're looking very careful at any HTML tags and such. They're also happily trying to use residential IP addresses. So you see a lot of residential users that are then being turned into bots in order to emulate these clicks. Secondly, these botnets also provide inventory to actually display the ads. So they're trying to either impersonate or hijack well-respected publishers in order to then sell this ad space to advertisers. And then they have the botnets click on these ads because, well, uh, typically nobody, of course, would visit these domains. According to Google, uh, this Eve botnet made about 3 billion requests each day and contained 1 million compromised IP addresses, counterfeiting about 10,000 different websites. So that's a pretty massive operation that of course uh, did bring in quite a bit of revenue. Now Google's report is about 35 pages long, so too much to cover here as part of this brief podcast. But if you're interested in some of this malware economy, I certainly recommend you take a look. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.